Many people uh, know where my inner sanctum is. The inner sanctum of Armstead Spotswood. Well, welcome to another teeth-chattering edition of Midnight Frights. Glad y'all are here, and glad to see some mail has arrived. But before we break into this, I've been wanting to tell you about RavenCon 2013. It was very fun, and, uh, well, actually, we should just look at some pictures. The pictures will speak for themselves. This is it. RavenCon. What I was telling you about. A party just for me. Just for my inventions. Sci-fi. Horror. Edgar Allan Poe. Anyway, check it out. Can I interest you in uh, a poster? We got uh, art featuring uh, characters from Doctor Who, everything from Daleks to the Zarbi. You know? Oh, the whole, the whole darn thing. I'm okay. sorry, I just filed for bankruptcy. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But it's a beautiful poster. Thank you very much. Um, Doctor Who, do you take HMO or PBR by chance? Yeah, not really that kind of doctor. Yeah. Because uh, I think it's more honorary. Yeah. Did I see you on Batman? I don't think that was me. Uh, Raven Khan. Phew. Oh, um. Oh, let's, where were we? Let's get to that box of mail. Great. To Armstead Spotswood, care of the Bird Theater, from Brenda. Now, where is my letter opener? Aha! This is what I've been looking for. All right, so once we get through this mail, we'll get back to tonight's feature film, Basil Rathbone's Robot the Raven. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh my goodness. This is a Sailor Bob's hat. been explored and colonized, and the next space goal is about to be reached, the first landing by man on the planet Venus. Scientists profoundly hope that life, similar to that on Earth, may be found on this planet 
where so many physical conditions are like our own. Three rocket ships of an international space expedition, the Sirius, Vega, and Capella, after having successfully traveled 200 million miles, are in the final stages of their journey, rapidly approaching their destination. What is it? What's happened? Capella, sir. I'm afraid she's been hit by a meteorite. Damn it. Completely destroyed, sir. Contact the Sirius at once. Yes, sir. And almost to their goal. It seems so unfair. There's no fair or unfair. To a meteorite, you get hit, you die. Seems so unreal. I just spoken to them. We choked. It's Lunar 7, Commander. Patch it is. Attention, crews of Sirius and Vega. We were deeply shocked to learn of the loss of the Capella. Flight plan A, however, must still be followed. Therefore, we request both ships to go into orbit and remain there until the arrival of spaceship Asta, due to blast off here immediately. Meanwhile, secure and relay instrument information about conditions on Venus. That is all. That's well. Orbit and wait. For how long? Months? Why complain? Ah. It's Hartman. He's the one who built this baby. And now when he says we should go fly all around Venus, that's precisely what'll happen. Better plan on it. There's more I can do than orbit and wait. What do you mean? Look, the plan before was to land just one ship. That's true, with the cybernetic machine. You keep him. Better I pilot it. But Andre, the machine will study the land. This I know. But I'm more observant, more apt to see what's going on. You don't want to send this monster. Venus must be seen by more than a robot. All right. Just suppose we go along with you, Andre. What about Hartman's plan? Hartman would agree with me. But we can't take that chance. Then what do we do? We contact Kurt, and we ask him to have the robot compute a landing plan for the auxiliary spacecraft. Soon he'll be our boss. Awaken, John. Awaken. Blow, John. Monitor, John. I hear you. Preview us. Be extra precise. There are changes you must make in our present landing pattern program. Plan now is Sirius and Vega. You. Me and Sherman, on the same spaceship. Then Commander Lockhart, Walters, and Furneaux in the second ship. First ship Sirius, second ship Vega. Problem, land on Venus and return. Land three and three, Sirius, return five, leaving one. What man remains? Since one of six must remain, that one shall be me. Lunar Station 7. Lunar Station 7. This is Command Ship Vega calling. Command Ship Vega. Come in, Vega. We read you. Professor Hartman, message from the Vega. Alan Kearns Thomason has computed a new flight plan. We request approval for landing of Kern, Sherman, and Robot in the auxiliary spacecraft. They will seek a safe area on Venus to land. Command ship Sirius with Lockhart, Walters, and Forno. I will keep the Vega in orbit in order to assure the safe return of the Sirius with all men. We feel it unnecessary to have to wait for the arrival of the Astor. Uh, this is Professor Hartman speaking. 
Your plan is quite logical. But I'm concerned about the possible psychological danger to you in remaining too long alone on the Vega. Uh, get me Evan's psychological test record, will you? Well, I had expected to land with the others, but in view of the emergency situation, I feel this is a better plan. Professor Hartman, I'm, I'm positive I can handle it. So am I, Doc. Who's that? German, Professor. Didn't anyone ever tell you ladies are tougher than men? <laughs> You're quite right, German. Uh, perhaps I did forget. Permission granted. Thank you, Professor Hartman. I will contact you again with a progress report at 0400 hours. Commander Lockhart, Vega calling. Yes? We've received permission to land to be followed by the Sirius. Well, now. And just how do you suggest we manage that? Marsha will stay and keep Vega in order. It's a job. But it sounds like it's all set. Kern's robot calculated the details. If you're sure, let's get moving on it. Andre? I'm ready, Skipper. I'm with you also. Sherman, make room for a spaceship. I'll join you there. Maybe. With luck. See you on Venus. Pressure reading on planet's surface, two and three. No sign of opening. Cloud formations, 30% ash content. I see something, a spot of red glowing with great brilliance right through the spectrum. A spot of red could be Hades. We are now gathering all possible data in preparation for landing. However, no observation from orbit can let us know the answer to the most important question we've come to ask of Venus. Does life in any form exist on this planet? And if so, what kind? I personally doubt if any does, my dear Marsha. A planet of fire below us. Is it a new world or will it consume us all? Those that bright red spot could be a city or something. Attention Sirius. Attention Sirius. Sherman Kern and Automaton John ready to embark at zero, 100 hours. I envy you, Sherman, and you, Alan Kern, to be the first humans to set foot on Venus. We wish you all success. I envy you both. Good luck. Bon voyage. She's about to enter the cloud layer. She's moving well. At any moment now. Black clouds. Light. I don't like the looks of this. I'm turning control over to Robot John. Ahead, steep mountain. I am going up. Wow, close call. We're watching on the location finder. The area is strange. This is truly a prehistoric planet. Prehistoric planet is right. Hey, there's a hard level spot. Right. Attention, Sirius. Your landing location is square 73. We're now dropping our beacon. Landing 300 meters southwest of square 73. Oh, oh, there's water beneath us. We're drifting. Commander Lockhart? Commander Lockhart, what happened?
Marsha, don't be too worried. The signal was only broken by the horizon. I'm sure they've landed. In an hour when we pass in orbit, we'll contact them again. Yes, sir. Is there anything further you'd like me to do? Not for now. We might as well all get some rest. Sherman. Kern. Answer. Kern. Sherman. Kern. Are you there? It's hopeless. No choice. Let's break orbit. We'll prepare the ship. You better bring her about and plan a course to find her. Marsha. Marsha, are you listening? Yes, Commander. It's likely they're in trouble and need help. The responsibility is ours. Listen to me. If something should happen, don't you be afraid. I won't. I promise. Shall I sign off now? You can help us most if you will be brave and keep faith. I will. Hello, Sirius. This is Professor Hartman speaking. Hello, Sirius. This is Professor Hartman speaking. We wish you to feel free to discontinue the expedition at your own discretion. Don't take unnecessary risks. Your lives are too valuable. All the nations of the Earth are eagerly awaiting the result of your exploration. We wish you all success. Switch. Lunar 7. My men, the ship, are just about to break through and drop. The plan is to land approximately the plot area 73. This should put us in position to contact Sherman and Kern or to give them help if needed. My people are proud and privileged to be chosen members of this expedition. The first on Venus's surface. Our special thanks to all people of Earth. Well, my boy, all we can do now is wait. What do you think they'll find, Doctor? Your guess is as good as mine. Let's just hope that they arrive there safely. Begin celebrating yet. Uh -huh. oh. Is our level okay? Yep, there it is. On the button. Boy, it sure feels strange to have weight. Yes, it does seem strange. That's sure. But it's nice and solid. Well, I don't know about you fellas, but I'd like to see Venus. Open number three and hit the beam. Paper. Try the port viewer. Telescreen gets it okay. We'll pan port. Formations of weird rock. Something's there. I'll switch on the outside sound pickup. What is it? A human being? <laughs> <laughs> 
Hold it. It's finished. Transfer it to playback. Meanwhile, you might check upon the atmosphere, Hans. It better be good. Then you better get your spacesuit. We'll move out. Andre, I want you to attempt a contact with Sherman by radio. If you raise them, tell them to report their position. Then get yourself into a spacesuit. We're going to walk about. I'm right behind you. That'll be handy if I slip. Get popping now. It's 4.7 on oxygen. That's pretty close. All right, people, send your letters to Armstead Spotswood, Care of the Bird Theater, and that's 2908 West Cary Street, Richmond, Virginia, 23221. When I was a little girl, my grandfather brought me to meet Sailor Bob. He signed my heart, and now I want you to have it. Good luck. Feeling all emotional and stuff. Okay, boys and girls, for those of you not in the know, Sailor Bob inspired a whole generation of artists with his drawings. So, I am gonna do a portrait of the star of tonight's film.
All right, that was fun. So, now let's return to our feature film, Cowboy Lava Flow Shootout. We were lucky. Good, solid rock. I'll check out there. Keep on the rope. Don't get out of visual contact. just received a message. What did they say? Marsha has radar movement. Sherman? She can't be sure, but it looks like two objects. One metallic and moving in the area we expected to search. Probably Kern and Sherman. Come on, Andre. Imagine that. He's bashful. Why don't we take one of those things home for the zoo? You've got to be more careful, Andre. If we hadn't heard you call me. I didn't call. You called out to us. We heard you. But I didn't call you. It sounded like Lockhart. Let's be getting back. Call Marsh again, Andre. Make contact with crew of Sirius again at 0825. They reported a perfect landing on square 73 as planned. Marsha, this is Commander Lockhart. Yes, Commander. I'm afraid you haven't given us enough information about the location of the spacecraft. I need to know their precise position. I'm sorry. I was so happy you've made a safe landing. I forgot to tell you. They're in square 107, about a mile from the red spot. The direct distance from you is 32 miles across the bay. 
We'll have to go by air. Is the car ready? More than ready. Will the car make it there? It does, or we walk. I'd sure like a four-lane freeway. Bet that you'd get a flat. Commander? Yes? What's happened to the robot? Marsha. Marsha? Have you been apprised at all about the robot? Well, apparently they're having some difficulty with him. He was loaded aboard the ship, partially disassembled. I'm afraid they haven't been able to reassemble him yet. Keep coming. Born John. That's it. I wouldn't if I could find one. There he is. He's up. Pull it tight. He can hold it. You better go first, and I'll come along after you. The 
shoreline's the best. If we do, my friend, we'll never make it to them. That chance there is of finding them. That voice again. Hold up. A girl. A girl? Perhaps. Or a monster. It's a human sound. Well, there are sure no humans here. Well, we're humans. Well, no one else has made it. You better believe it. But it sounds so human. Subhuman, you mean, like that 40 arm plant that just grabbed you. I still say it's a girl. A girl. With blue scales. Could be. He's on to something. It's possible that before us, other men got here. Especially in this age. You ought to know that, Hans. To a man of science, anything is possible until proven otherwise. It wouldn't be surprising if maybe Andre'd find something. Furthermore, this whole galaxy realm could have been explored and inhabited. Well, I can't imagine any people in their right mind exploring planet Venus. Come on, Hans. We're here, and we're in our right minds, aren't we? Uh, let's go. Mathematics, my proof. Mathematics, my... Uh. Marcia. Marcia. 
Here is. Here is Masha. You you must help us. It's it's closing in. I await your order. I await your order. Help them find us, John. Hey, I hope you all are enjoying tonight's film. Well, I guess, uh, I guess we gotta see some more Ravencon pictures. Seema, boy, Druk. Ah, very good. Thank you very much. I, um, I just wanted to tell you I'm so impressed with the special effects you all used on the moon landing in oh, 1969. Yes. We, we heard so much about that. I used to uh, tell people, you're Capricorn One, one of the funniest movies I ever saw. Yeah. <laughs> well, I heard it on the radio, and I totally believed every minute of it. My brothers, my brothers. What's going on? These are my pals from the Pamunkey Indian tribe. And uh, mm. what I need to do is come down there and then we can go party in West Point. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And, we um, have our own really, putt-putt course. When we used to play country music with Hank Jr., mm -hmm. I remember we used to tear it up. Are you all still playing country music? Yeah, but we haven't seen Hank in a while, though. Right. He didn't talk to us after the bicycle accident. Ooh. I've been touring the easy listening circuit. Really? How's that going? I call. Excuse me, madam. How are you? I want to commission a voodoo doll. In particular, the Lord Grantham from Downton Abbey voodoo doll. Actually, we're a part of Ghostbusters Virginia, so there's actually more of us. We're actually a bigger organization. We do a lot of charity work. Well, can you all introduce me to Ray Parker Jr. at some point? I knew somebody that used to do sound for him. I wish. No, we did beat uh, Ernie Hudson. Well, I want to know these beings. I heard they were full size, and I don't know how you shrunk them. Did you? take the skeletons out of them and then boil them, or how does that work? Did you leave the organs in there, or are they full of sand? And I just don't uh, know. No, they're full of stuffing, like pillows. Well, then how do they shrink? If, I was told they were full size. And... I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Kern Sherman, Kern Sherman. Come in, please. Come in, please. Kern Sherman, answer, please. Hans Walters, do you hear me? I sure do. What seems to be the matter? What makes you think there's something wrong? I can always tell by the tone of your voice. Oh. Well, I can't seem to contact Kern and Sherman any longer. I don't know what's happened to them. We're on our way to them now, so just keep trying. Will do. Lord, save them. What? No response from Kern or Sherman. Well, we should soon be there. Keep trying. Maybe we can bring them in on the helmet mic. Kern has an auxiliary. I am. I'm getting... The woman must be Marshall. That is really awful. Hear it? From what I can determine, the whole has been slightly damaged. The frequency is the case. Please try to point to point. Move it up. Point to point on the dial. We'll find them. I'll try it. Hello. John, hello. John, listen. This is the command ship. Are you there? No response. Come in. Up one more point. Come in. Better go to solar battery. Much bigger reach. I'm on it now. Hello. 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 
You must hear me, John. Please open your mic and answer me. You must obey me, John. No response. Try another point. One, two, five. You have to readjust your frequency for transmitting, if you hear me. I hear you. I have adjusted. Can you report your position and plot number? Over. Where 40 in shelter. Tell me what's outside. Water from above falling on large rock. That's square 40. Not far. Ask him about the men. Hello. We would like to know about Kern and also about Sherman. They do not speak. They do not move. How much time before we get there? Who knows? Commander, maybe the robot can help. Try. Keep an eye on the compass. Grab onto them. Hello. You will listen, John. First, you will obey me and do precisely what I say. You will listen. Listen, John. Obey my every command. Remove container two from Kern's first aid kit. Repeat, container two. Do this quickly. Revive him with water. Pour it over his face. Quickly. Then close his helmet. At zero, 915 hours. I transmitted all latest data from Venus to Lunar Station 7. At 0, 130 hours, I passed in orbit over the air car. It was at that time about to embark on the Venusian Ocean. At least we know they're alive. Let's hope they stay that way. Commander, look there. Ready with the astrophan. Some kind of flying reptile. He may not see us. He hit. He's turning around. Maybe not. We're in for it now. He knows we're here. Luck. Take it now. Here he comes. Don't miss him. Marsha. We're being attacked by a flying animal. Air car damage. Transmit to number seven. Commander Lockhart, what happened? What shall I transmit? Here he comes again. We'll submerge. from Command Ship Vega. Marsha Evans calling from Command Ship Vega. Yes, Marsha, we read you. I need emergency instruction immediately. Professor Hausman speaking. What is it, Evans? 
I have now lost contact with both parties on Venus. At last contact, Lockhart, Ferno, and Walters were being attacked in the air car over water by an unknown flying animal. They apparently have submerged. I'm afraid they may need my help. Shall I land? Listen carefully, Evans. It would be extremely... Lunar Station 7. Lunar Station 7, I can't hear you. Come in, please. Hello, Vega. I need your instructions. Come, Come in, in Vega. What is it? Why can't we get through to her? Just a moment, Doctor. I'm checking the power. Command ship Vega. Calling Command ship Vega. Attention, Marcia Evans. Under no circumstances are you to leave orbit now. This is extremely important. I'm sorry, Doctor. We just we just can't get through to her. I'm afraid there's a short in the All power right. circuit. Place it and fix it. We simply can't allow her to leave orbit now. Come in, please. I just don't know what to do. The air car isn't fit for submerging. If their suits aren't damaged, they could get out. It may be they're hurt. And if they are, they need my help. I can only land on the next orbit. I'll have to wait an hour yet before switching on the propellants. A whole hour. But I feel I must go to them. for a minute. Take a rest. It's not far to the beach, if our calculations are correct. I hope this will run again. Don't worry, it will. Look, the cliffs are all in even rows, like streets. I'll look around, just five minutes. Might find something interesting. Look, that's a shark's tail. Yes, but with the head of a dolphin. Andre, don't go too far. Looks like it's been carved. You've gone far enough. Why don't you come back now? Just a quick look. Might find something. Look, here. That's only a petrified tree. Only? Why, it's a bronze statue. And much more, Hans. Rubies. 
You say rubies? Show me. Simple. The eye of an idol. An idol? Yes, a reptile. A reptile resembling that flying monster that attacked us earlier. Up there. You're right, Andre. I'm not laughing anymore. There was a civilization here. And I'll bet you there still is. absorbs oxygen. Oh, harder, John! Harder! Can you imagine a home built out here in this beautiful valley? Looks nice. Don't expect too many visits from me if you do, my friend. I'm homesick already. Oh, look at the fun we'd have fighting the lizard men. Look, the tree's falling. We'll soon have our bridge. Ready to cross now. Play some music. Mm. To march across by. What would you like to hear, Mr. Kern? Anything you are programmed to play, my dear John. Do you care for some free candy here? Got well, some raisins and I got some berries. Got some chocolate right here. Don't mind if I do. Oh, please, help yourself. I didn't uh, eat breakfast. Oh, well, that's understandable. You know, Pete, it's, it's, it's quite the con. Uh, my name is Pete Prowitz. I have a 25th century romance adventure. I have a 27th century military sci-fi. It's four books. You can read the first one and it stands on its own, but two, three, and four you have to read because they, they, they're all one book. And then finally, I have a, a 31st century science fantasy where mankind has learned how to program reality by using zeros, ones, twos, threes, and fives. And they come in ebooks as well as uh, some have. These two here, Horizons and Shards, are in audio format. So, do you have any questions or would you like any samplers? Do you have any Slim Jims? Um, yeah. I have some jerky. Oh. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, I have a, a problem. I need some dice, uh, weighted dice. Uh, oh, you want loaded dice? Uh, okay, well. I was hoping you could help me. I have a set of dice here. One set is normal dice. The other set is guaranteed to roll sevens and elevens. And don't tell anyone where you get those. Yes, sir. All right, your secret is safe with me. I say, when he tries to use those dice, one of them's got fives and the other's got twos and sixes. I'm killing surrealist piece yeah. of absurdist car movie. And I've never been able to find a copy. And I've never been able to tell anybody about it. Because you can't describe it. You have to show it. And I want to thank you for, for running it. I really that appreciate it. That makes my heart soar like an eagle. Yeah. Oh, and I, and I saw the preview that made me trouble that you did for the radio. Ah, uh, what, did you approve? <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh yeah. Okay, good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I need that positive reinforcement. I heard I need to practice learning how to smoke a cigarette. Yeah. My cousin said I smoke just like my Victorian grandmother. Hi, I'm Spotswood. Armstead Spotswood from Midnight Frights. And I, uh, I'd like to get some skating lessons from one of the River City Roller Girls. <laughs> Well, I am Helga from the East German team. Uh, ah. um, I just uh, borrowed their space because they weren't here today. Oh, a steampunk western? Yes. Does it have anything about tanks in it? I actually happen to have a tank that I built myself. Hat and Cross Steampunk is my steampunk makers group and uh, out of Gloucester, Virginia. And we have, not only do we have a drivable steampunk tank, but uh, we also have uh, a drivable steampunk Dalek, if you're a Doctor Who fan. So. I'll trade you a a hearse ride for a tank ride. Is this one of those one-time hearse rides? Weren't those incredible? So now you know not to miss RavenCon 2014. So let's get back to the conclusion of tonight's film, Mystery Date on Venus. We're here. I couldn't have lasted much longer. You're, you're not alone. Here we are, Skipper. Good. We'll need more fire. Everything in the car is soaking wet. Ah, uh, feels good to sit. How are the batteries, Hans? They stay dry. For the atom plant? Still hot. You've got that worried look again, Hans. You're right. I've pulled and checked every wire and part in that darn radio. It won't operate. I've tried everything I know. I tell you, it's simply hopeless. How about a long string in an oatmeal box? <laughs> oatmeal box. The radio will dry out. We know it's not a dead planet. Not completely. Our proof is the statue and Ruby. And the woman. She's probably somewhere, for his sake. But the main thing is, there could be a whole race of people out there watching us, hiding, afraid that we'll observe them. And bite them? We came from above. Drop. To them, we're probably some kind of monster. What if they're human shape? They very well could look like us. But mind you, I'm only advancing a little hypothetical science fiction. Because nothing should be overlooked. Let's face it. They built a city that's now under the sea. Hans, it must be true. Many made it to shore from the sea. Then why didn't they build themselves another? We may find they did. When we explore the planet. Beautiful song and a beautiful girl. She must have heard you. Where is it? Everywhere. Suppose it could be an omen? Or maybe she's helping us. If I could just see what she looks like. Can the car make it? I'm sure. Are you a lovely lady, face that I admire, or a monster looking down on us with horns breathing fire? Andre! 
Andre! Thanks for waiting. <laughs> she take care of you. Stop teasing him, hon. He's in love. <laughs> gotten suddenly dark. Well, it's no wonder. What makes you say that? There's an ash cloud above us. An ash cloud? A volcano. Yes. It's spectacular. And beyond the volcano, it looks like the lights of a city. The red spot Andre saw. We must get a move on. Not right away. This might be our only chance to gather some samples. Lava and ash. To take away with us. All right. We'll go to a much better vantage point than right now. Sherman, come. But look at the magnificence. No one on Earth has seen such a sight. Spectra sample? Getting it now. That's enough. The lava is rising. We waited too long. It's covered our path. Perhaps we can run a rope. How? We did it before. From John. There's no more time. Don? Yes, I hear you. Carry us across the lava. Climb on, quick! you have here. Hmm. Nice to hear you admit it, Alan. Temperature, lower extremities, 500 degrees. My self-preservation mechanism says I must eliminate extra weight. What now? Disconnect the mechanism. Where? Open the door. Here? Mm, first panel. Hurry or we're dead for sure. I don't know which. Let me. I am forced to read out of this weight. Hold on. They'll 
I'll be here. Wish me luck. For God's sakes, hurry. Make it. Is the robot finished? Yes. Destruction was imminent. He called my name. Looks placid and calm. But frightening. Yes, I suppose it does. If you use imagination. We'll soon be home. That's right. But we'll leave a friend behind. Come. Join the rest of us. Any luck? No. No. We'll be out of here soon. How do you know that? What else is there to do? Well, we can look for Andre's girl. Very cute, huh? You name them after us? Hmm? Well, with triplets, it's better with numbers. Looks to me like he's raising his own countdown. Why not names? I'd forget. I'm worried about him. <laughs> so you really found proof there were people on this planet. Hard to believe. Believe it or not, my dear Mr. Kern, it's true. And they could still be here. I don't go along with that. Could a human survive in a place like this? You survive. And man will almost always adapt himself in time. And don't forget in the dim past we all lived in water. For centuries our Earth was toxic. But that atmosphere evolved mankind's form. Adjusting the answer. And I'd bet that these people on our planet couldn't live. The air'd be poisoned. Afraid I don't share your opinion. You just can't close your mind to it. We found proof. Proof of intelligent beings. And those lizard men of Kearns. That's proof? Look, 
Suppose they do look like lizards. Couldn't they be people? Hmm? Suppose they saw the ship, got frightened, then donned their lizard costumes, eh? Then jumped up and down to spook us away. <laughs> what possible story could explain it better, huh? <laughs> None. You're the winner. Joking aside, my friend, man, lizard, or what, I know there were or are intelligent people here. If we just had time, I think they might come to us. Look, even you, Kern, said you thought you saw the lights of a city beyond the volcano. I said they looked like, not were. Here, you two, have some coffee and rest your voices. That voice that comes to us now and then, what does she look like? If I could only see her, she couldn't be anything but beautiful. Why do I keep thinking about it? I'll probably never know the answer. I think perhaps we should be trying to find her and take her with us. <laughs> I vote for that. But she might not like us much anyway. If we can explore beyond those hills, I'll bet you money we find her and the city. You've been reading too many comics. Kern wouldn't believe she existed if she were sitting on his lap right now. Want to bet? We're here. I think we did a job we can be proud of. Look at all the samples we got. There's going to be a large headline when they see all these great things we're bringing back to them. This one's loaded, old man. Steady, child. Bring the spectra. That's the last. Commander Lockhart, hurry. We have Marsha's recording from Vega. I hope the automatic recorders in Sirius will record this message. I have been unable to contact Luna Station 7 for further instructions. I cannot wait any longer while my fellow astronauts are in need of my help. I am therefore disobeying Plan 1 and landing on Venus. The dial of the automatic control system is now indicating that in one minute the propellants will be ignited. I... This is a mess now. More than that. Marsha's mistake was the worst. The worst. 
We'd better make a plan, a good one. No mark on the scope. I hope she's still up safe. Hello, Vega. Hello, she Vega. May have crashed and burned. I pray not. We should notify Hartman. We can only contact Hartman through Vega. Men, we must act. You, Sherman, Hearn, Andre, I suggest this. Maybe she's there. Hans and I must blast up in orbit. We'll try to locate Vega. If we find her there at all, and I pray we do, we'll contact you and Dr. Hartman. Yes, sir. How do the rest of you feel? I'm for moving up just as fast as we can get airborne. Quickly, Andre. Hunt. This was all level ground when we landed. The stream's cutting a whole new channel above. Dipper, look here. A crack running clear across. If it widens anymore, we'll all be lost. Quick, light and ship for emergency blast off. Maybe we can beat it. You saw it. I didn't, but radar has. There's a record of her passing after that time. She didn't land after all. She's still up there. You sure? Let's try her. Marcia, hello. Come in. Marcia, what happened to you? I'm all right. Professor Hartman reached me again, just as the ship was about to start. He ordered me to wait, no matter how I felt. He made me realize my responsibility. I'm very grateful to him now. But your orbit is different. Well, the propellants had already started, and it changed before I could shut them off. Now Hartman's plan makes good sense. Hello. Now give me your new orbit plot. And position. Attention. Everyone return to the ship. What could it be? We've heard from Marsha. She's still in orbit. Marsha. Andre, throw the switch on the weather station. Yes, sir.
search for intelligent life on other planets and in other galaxies will continue. For this is the heart and the meaning of that great adventure, the exploration of the universe. Go to bed. <laughs> 